indeed thrilling for us to be here with you tonight. The Institute for Policy Studies has a long and valued reputation of promoting and protecting human rights. For MTI and the TAs to be recognized by your organization is an honor to our unions and to have been selected among many equally qualified to receive the Letelier Moffat Award is an honor a hundredfold over what we ever could have anticipated. The list of recipients of past awards, Father, tonight, is not only most impressive, but causes us to be humbled. While our fight is often looked upon as occurring over two bitter cold months last winter, such is not the case. Our fight continues. We cannot and will not. We cannot and will not let up until both individual worker rights and union rights of representation, both stolen by a puppet governor at the behest of the right-wing American Legislative Exchange Council, have been restored. Wisconsin has long been a progressive state, the origin of which goes back to the beginning of the last century with fighting Bob La Follette. It is funding by the Koch brothers Amway, Walmart, and the like, which has in recent years stolen our elections in Wisconsin, including that of the recent governor's election, the recent U.S. Senate election, both houses of the legislature, and even our Supreme Court. I'm glad to say, however, that the Wisconsin progressive movement is on its way back. Having won two state recall elections in solid Republican areas this, this past fall and preserving two Democrat recall elections. We are, our mission is now to move on and recall Governor Walker. Our protests changed the electoral landscape in Wisconsin. Totaling the votes in the nine Senate recall districts that I just talked about and comparing it with the votes of the governor in the same districts just 10 months prior, his vote count would fall by 65,000, about half of his total margin of victory. And we came within one-tenth of one percent of unseating a regressive right-wing Supreme Court justice, one-tenth of one percent. And I'll tell you, we were lucky. We had thought if she could get 30 percent of the votes, we would be lucky. We came within one-tenth of one vote, of, of one percent. That never would have been possible without the surge in the, in the Wisconsin progressive movement. Ironically, the governor and his cronies across the country got elected by hoodwinking the middle class and inducing many to vote against their own interests. Their campaign was a slick one, effectively pitting private sector workers against public sector workers, painting public workers as the haves and the private sector workers as the have-nots, when it was really the corporations which stripped the private sector workers of not only their benefits, but their unions. MTI is a member-driven organization, living proof to my right. Organizing, which usually takes weeks, if not months, was accomplished by MTI leadership in two days. <laughs> Following what the TAs did, as Barbara Lawton talked about, that same day, I was meeting with the MTI Board of Directors, giving my usual report, but I was telling them what plans the governor had to take away their rights. That meeting stopped immediately. Get the list of our representatives in the schools. The board started calling, telling the people to be at a meeting the next day. For the first time in a couple of years, we had an overflow cloud of representatives and they started calling the people in the school saying, tomorrow, don't go to work, go to the Capitol. And we shut down the schools then for four days. Woo. 
The message was clear. The governor is taking our rights. It wasn't about economics. It wasn't that he had proposed to increase their pay or their, their compensation that goes for, for uh, health insurance and retirement benefits, both of which we had negotiated in trade for many other things, and both of which our members had enjoyed for years. But the governor's action has now reduced their compensation for, by about 15%. So joining us in this movement was our friends from the firefighters, our friends from the police officers union, from the deputy sheriff's union, from the state, county, and municipal workers unions, and then came the private sector to join us. It was the first day, maybe a few thousand, and then in the tens of thousands, and up to 135,000. Both, both pub, public and private sector unions joined by progressives from across the country. The Capitol was occupied 24-7 for three weeks. Support came from freedom-loving people in more than 40 countries around the globe. People were calling restaurants and coffee shops, offering their credit cards for people to take food and coffee up to the Capitol Square where the protests were ha happening. In fear of the mounting de demonstrations, the right-wing legislative majority created a bogus committee to act on the governor's proposed legislation. His minions and the state assembly acted immediately and without following legislative rules. To put the brakes on, the 14 Democratic senators went to Illinois. They couldn't be arrested in Illinois. Without them, the Senate lacked a quorum. So they were put, the brakes were put on very effectively. We were able to organize. We were able to start litigation. The school district, in fact, tried to say we were on strike and uh, get an, an injunction to force us back to work. Our argument was we're not on strike. We don't have a beef with the school district. Our brief is with the governor. What you're trying to do doesn't fit the mold of the, of the, of the uh, state statutes in Wisconsin. The statute in Wisconsin define a strike as an action against an employer to try to extract something of benefit from the employer. Judge denied the injunction. Our, our job actions went on. The legislation unfortunately went on. The, the Senate Democrats came back. The, the action was passed immediately with obviously all of them voting against it. But the heavy-handed heavy politics, the heavy concentration of, 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 of uh, protesters was a big collision course. And the governor, in his fear, refused to deal with us, went forward and passed the legislation. We had one last hope. That was our Secretary of State, a good Democrat, a progressive Democrat. He refused to publish the legislation, so it could not become law. <laughs> so, so what does the governor do? He directs that the Department of Administration, his Secretary of Administration, publish the law by sending it out by email. So it passed, if you will, by not only something that was not enabled by legislative rules, it was not enabled by the statutes of Wisconsin. That fight goes on. It was former President Eisenhower who said, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the, fight, the size of the fight in the dog. And that's where we are, folks. When it comes to the rights of the people, we cannot be deterred. IPS is an example of that. The TAs are an example of that. MTI is an example of that. We will press on. We cannot fail to go forward and win this fight. The middle class and the poor have been taken advantage of by the governor's legislation. We must get that reversed. The governor may prevail in the short term. He is not going to prevail in the long term as we in the progressive movement are not going to stand idly by while our rights are taken, while our freedom of speech is taken, while our freedom of assembly is taken, and our unions are demoralized and go away. That is not going to happen. We shall fight on.
The unions enable workers to speak collectively as regards a fair wage for their labor, to assure that their work is done under safe conditions, and to assure that workers have dignity in what they do. It is the collective voice which enables workplace justice. We don't understand why those on the far right are not respectful of those who, re who work for a living and wish to benefit from collectivism. Recognizing this in the mid-1900s, U.S. Supreme Court Justice Hughes observed, long ago we stated the reason for labor organizations. We said that they were organized out of the necessities of the situation, that a single employee was helpless in dealing with the employer, that union was essential to give laborers the opportunity to deal on equality with their employer. Remember, it was the union that brought the weekend, the 40-hour week, the eight-hour day, sick leave, worker safety, and the ability to live the American dream. One of the interesting things that is now surfacing in this right wing, from this right-wing legislation is that they failed to take into consideration that 15% of loss of income that I talked about a little while ago, that that was caused by this governor forbidding by legislation public employers to pay more than 88% of the health insurance premium. Well, that was part of what we bargained. That was part of our deal. The school board agreed to that. And we had negotiated that the school board pay their share and the teacher's share into the retirement system. That was something that we bargained. We gave up wages to have them do that because that was tax-free money when they did it that way. Well, what he has won was they have taken $1 billion out of the economy. We now have people who can't buy their kids tennis shoes, can't buy school supplies. So that, that, those are essentials, but also took away a lot of discretionary spending, the people going out to dinner. The, pe the, the restaurants in Madison are not doing well. We have a huge public sector workforce in Madison. But not only do we have 5,000 people in the school district, we have the city of Madison, we have Dane County, we have the Technical College, we have the University of Wisconsin, and we have the state employees. Their discretionary income down 15%. So they aren't doing the things that I mentioned. They cannot afford to do those kind of things. And it's gotten so bad that the governor walks into a restaurant and the people get upset by him and they start protesting and raising hell because he's in the restaurant. Yeah. And the proprietors ask him to leave. Well, in closing, let me tell you thank you once again for Madison Teachers and the Teaching Assistance Association. We must stand firm against those who take away our rights and their intention to destroy our unions, the vehicle which provides power and equity to working people. Keep in mind that it was the ship, shipyard workers in Gdansk, Solidarity Union, that caused the first crack in the Iron Curtain. So together, folks, we shall overcome. Thank you very much.